All right, let's move on to our next one here from ArsTechnica.com. Samsung's Android app signing key has leaked. And That's bad. Not surprisingly, is being used to sign malware. That didn't take long. I wonder what the time was between the leak and just the flood of. Can you malware. imagine being that hacker that it's like, oh, it's a key. Holy shit, it's <laughs> Samsung's key. <laughs> and then the. Like, you know, like I've all that. got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hackers unite. Yes. What, what happens in a case like that? Like, I know if that happened to my home, I would have a locksmith come out and rekey it. Uh, is that metaphorically the same process here? Well, so yeah, yes, they they can they can revoke the certificate and issue new ones. Now, there's a lot of challenges that fall into this. Uh, the main one being Android phones are not the most reliable for being updated. So whether or not the phones will pay attention to that certificate mm -hmm. being revoked is a whole different story. Some people, like Samsung and Google, with their Pixel phones, are really good about updating it, but. What the, what the headline glances over is that this didn't just affect Samsung. They also found compromised keys for LG and MediaTek as well. Now, MediaTek you might not have heard of, but they make the processor for a lot, or the system on a chip, SOC, for a lot of Android phones. Uh, so you'll see them in a, a ton of set-top boxes and things. So this is not limited just to Samsung. It's kind of interesting that we could have so many high profile companies have their signing key stolen and we just now hear about it, right? Yeah. So I think there's a bigger problem. So what, what actually happened here is that Google has a, uh, a group inside of the company called the Android Partner Vulnerability Initiative. And they were doing research and found these basically compromised keys. They released a list that was hashed, and the people over at ours were able to run that against Virus Total to figure out the companies that were in the list. And so they found Samsung, LG, MediaTek, and a handful of others. So that means there's some bigger problem here. Now, this could end up being like where we just had an instance of this a few weeks ago where it wasn't the company that got hacked, it was a subcontractor they were using, and the subcontractor leaked out the keys. This could end up being something like that because. Samsung, LG, MediaTek, I'm sure they all have deals with AT&T, Verizon, so on. So any of the telcos could have been compromised that maybe had that key used for deploying images out to systems. But what it means for you, the end user, is if you download an app from outside of the App Store, right? So if you download from the Google Play Store or, well, this doesn't affect iOS, but the, the Google Play Store, then you know it's, it's safe. It's coming from Google. But if you go to F-Droid or any other place for downloading the APK files for installing an Android app, and it says it's signed by Samsung or it's signed by LG, well, right now, you can't trust that. You can't trust that that is signed the way that it is. If you stick with the regular traditional Google Play App Store, you're fine, but there's plenty of people that go and look to get APKs from other sources, and that's where you're in danger. But there's a bigger issue here, which is, how did so many of these companies get their key leaked out? And we'll likely find that there's some some kind of subcontractor that they were all using or one of the telcos will be at the heart of this one. Well, how about them apples? <laughs> but if you're using a, a Huawei or ZTE phone, oh, you're, you're screwed you're, already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Samsung malware now has to compete with those malwares. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they'll, they'll fight it out, but yeah. they're not focusing on your data. That's they're right. Focusing on that's each right. other. You, you get them conflicting with each other. Safety first. That's right. Well, that's a good day to, to be an iPhone user. Indeed. So, Don, why don't that? So, I was reading this article, and it seemed like they're still using this key. Like, they understand that it is compromised, and they're still continuing to use it. It still works in the lock. Why are they doing that? Well, so, from their perspective, so let's say you're Samsung, yeah. right? And you say, hey, look, we distribute our apps pre-installed on your phone, and we do all of our updates through the Google Play Store. So we don't care. If you choose to go and download APKs from other sources, that's your own problem. You take that risk and you go with it. But as far as what they're doing, they're doing is safe and secure. So why bother? That's, that's how they look at it. It's, so it's a breach that's it's not, not really a breach? What well, is? you know, it, it's yeah. not trivial for them to change it. Okay. And and they they should they should go and, and cycle those keys out. They've got a way to do it. It just it takes work. Okay. And so they're looking yeah. at it as you know what's the real risk here, and they just don't see the risk as being high enough. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's like you know, would Apple do something to support someone who had jailbroken their phone? 
Yeah. Be. So you, uh, you honestly made me start thinking about that stupid risk matrix chart that we have to show in every risk and risk management show that you know how much I enjoy, mm -hmm. right? But it's apparently here is the relevant, right? Because they're looking at likelihood versus impact. And they're like, well, it's pretty low on those spectrums. So yeah, versus the no effort, big deal. Yeah. The effort to change it. Interesting. I, I watched a documentary a while back. It was super cynical and it was talking about, uh, oh shoot. It was the, Pinto, I think. What was the half car, half truck? Uh, I think it was like the Ford Pinto or so something. No, the the, the where... Ford Pinto was like um, it was almost that had two versions of it. One was a station wagon. One was just a, a small hatchback, and it exploded right. when yeah, you flipped it over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, if it got rear-ended, it exploded. Yeah, the so gas there tank was like my brother, bumper. my brother had one. <laughs> like we we found a way oh, to nice. put the gas yeah. in the rear bumper. Yeah, yeah. it's ingenious. <laughs> But with the uh, the the people at I, I want to make sure I name the right company. So it, was, was it Ford? Ford. Yeah, it was Ford. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they actually just ran the numbers and they said, okay, what would it cost for us to recall every one of these cars versus what would it cost for us to just settle with anybody who dies, like their families? Yeah. And they, they determined settled. that it would be cheaper to just settle with the families. They're like, look, anyone and affected so that, by this is already dead. That reminds, it's like Fight Club, right? <laughs> Remember, he was doing the whole like. If the the cost of a recall is less than the cost of a of a sell, or our insurance claims, then we don't do a recall, or the other way around, right? Yeah. They, just, they just don't do it. And so that that's why we have to have consumer protection laws now to, to <laughs> step in and say, no, no, like, you don't whoa. you don't get to do that math. I, I think uh, <laughs> I, I think they had a meeting. And they said, look, do we value the lives of people that would drive a car this ugly? <laughs> You mean my my brother? It is an ugly car. It is hideous. He used to make fun of that thing. The only like positive thing about that car was it had a posse traction rear end, mm. and so it would hook up. I know about that. Pretty good. Well. My cousin Vinny. Yeah, that's right. You, that's very good. That was like <laughs> other. You know, there was the whole exploding gas tank the thing. Posse but, tra I mean, what's the odds, right? If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.